Hey everyone, welcome back to Foreverland. It's Nick here and I am so excited because my favorite festival is almost back and I cannot wait to share the magic with you all. The Flower and Garden Festival is starting only a few weeks away on March 3rd and Disney has finally released those food booth menus so I am here to be your vegetarian festival guide. But first, if you like our content and want to see more, remember to subscribe to our channel, like this video, and leave us a comment below. All right, let's get started. So in today's video, I'm going to go through each booth and let you know what vegetarian option there may be for you to try while at the Flower and Garden Festival. If you don't know, two out of the three members of Foreverland are vegetarians and we do know that it really can be a pain trying to find vegetarian or vegan options at Disney World parks, especially for these awesome festivals. So we thought we would make it super simple and lay it all out for you guys right here with this awesome vegetarian festival guide. If you've been to the Flower and Garden Festival before, you may have already tried some of these dishes that I'm going to talk about because there are some dishes from last year's Flower and Garden Festival, but there also are some new dishes that I'm really excited to talk about. So let's go ahead booth by booth and see all of the yummy treats that Disney has brought us this year. All right, so we are going to start outside of the World Showcase today at a booth called Flavorful Kitchen, which is actually in Future World on the west side. So they do have two options, one being a dessert and one being a savory dish. The first dish offered is grilled baby vegetables with hummus cream and red pepper coulis. That is plant-based, which means it is vegan. So if it's vegan, that means it's vegetarian. And the second option is going to be a dessert. It's strawberry mousse with chocolate crisp pearls. Now, I do need to double check once the festival starts to make sure that the mousse doesn't have gelatin in it because then it is not vegan or vegetarian or some vegetarians don't mind gelatin, but just be mindful with some of these desserts to check and make sure that if you are a person who does not like to consume gelatin to just always ask before you eat anything. So let's move on. Okay, the next booth is going to be Epcot Sunshine Griddle, which this is also not in the World Showcase. It's on the other side of Future World, the east side. And this booth has one dish that can be enjoyed by a vegetarian, and it is going to be avocado toast with marinated toy box tomatoes and fresh goat's cheese on toasted ciabatta. So it sounds really delicious. They do have a fried cinnamon roll bite dish with cream cheese frosting, but it does have candied bacon on it. So I'm sure you can ask for that dessert without candied bacon, but as is, it is not vegetarian or vegan. Both of these dishes that I mentioned are new for 2021, so that's pretty exciting. All right, so our next booth is the Honey Bistro, which is a booth that's right at the beginning of the showcase. and. This only has one dish this year. Last year they did have two, but one of their newer dishes did replace a vegetarian dish from last year. So all we do have is this one vegetarian dish. It is not vegan. It has honey and some mascarpone. Um, so this is just vegetarian. And the dish is a local wildflower honey mascarpone cheesecake with orange blossom honey whipped cream, whipped honey honeycomb, dehydrated honey, and it is garnished with fennel pollen meringue kisses. So this, they did have this dish last year. They did change it a little bit. So I'm not sure if we want to consider that a new dish or not. They did add a lot more honey components this year, which whipped honey to me sounds delicious. I cannot wait to try this dish. It sounds really great. Okay, the next booth is the Citrus Blossom which is typically right when you enter the showcase. It's usually the first booth you would see walking straight down that center walkway toward the showcase. And we are actually going to have two dishes this year from the Citrus Blossom, and one being the Citrus Shortcake, which is an orange chiffon cake. It will have lemon curd, some mandarins, 
whipped cream and a citrus crumble. They did have this dish last year. You may have enjoyed it already, but it does sound pretty tasty, so it may need to be another 2021 favorite. The other thing, I haven't really mentioned a lot of beverages, but this is kind of a popular one for the festival. So the orange cream shake in that souvenir orange bird zipper will be available this year at the Citrus Blossom, which is vegetarian. So if you like ice cream, some shakes, make sure to pick up that orange cream shake in the orange bird zipper. Okay, so the next booth or building, I suppose, is the refreshment port, which when you're walking into the showcase, if you go to the right towards Canada, you'll see Starbucks and then the refreshment port is the next building. And they do have some festival offerings. Uh, the first offering is a house-made Italian sausage and peppers poutine, which it's plant-based, it's vegan, that's great. Sounds really delicious. And it is new to 2021, so that's going to be, I'm sure, a hit dish, and I can't wait to try that one. The second dish that is vegetarian, it's not listed as plant-based, so that might be something you may want to ask if you're going to get it and you're vegan. Um, it's a popsicle trio. So it comes with a honeydew popsicle, raspberry mint, and a coconut lime popsicle, which sounds really refreshing on like a hot day, which typically is pretty hot at the Flower and Garden Festival. So that actually sounds really delicious. All right, so the next booth is the Pineapple Promenade. And we've got two items that you can enjoy if you're a vegetarian here. One is going to be a mixed berry buttermilk cake. Um, I'm not really sure what that'll be like. Um, but it sounds interesting to me. And the second thing is you can get Dole Whip here. It's, it's just your normal pineapple Dole Whip. So Dole Whip is just always a classic choice and you can get it at the Pineapple Promenade for the Flower and Garden Festival. And this one is so exciting. This booth, everything here is plant-based, which is great. I do love that there is one booth just dedicated to vegan options. Obviously, as a vegetarian, I would love to see more vegan and vegetarian options throughout the festival, but it is nice that there is one booth that we can go to and just know that our food is safe to eat and we can enjoy what's ever there. So let's go ahead and go through their menu. Okay, the first item is grilled street corn on the cob with savory garlic spread. And I had this and it was delicious. The next is an impossible sausage and kale soup. This is new, so that's really exciting. It sounds interesting. Um, the next is boneless, impossible Korean short ribs with cilantro, lime rice, Don Muji slaw, and kimchi mayonnaise. This is new and it sounds really, really good. <laughs> um, the flavors are always on point at Trowel and Trellis, so I'm super excited to give that one a try. And last, we do get a dessert. It's a lavender pot de creme with blueberry cake, pink peppercorn, and lime whipped cream. And that to me just sounds so tasty, so refreshing, creamy, tart. I, I literally, I'm gonna eat every single thing at this booth. I'm so excited for trowel and trellis. All right, at the refreshment outpost, which is at the Africa, I'm not really sure if it's a pavilion, but it's an area. Um, right after the china pavilion there's something called the refreshment outpost and they do have a vegan pineapple skewer with tahini seasoning and that just sounds really delicious to me i don't know the price it looks like it should only be like at most maybe three dollars so if it's anything more than that i'm not sure if it would be worth it but obviously tahini and fruit is so delicious so that's awesome that they offer this option all right, next we have the Barn Market, the Farmer's Market in Germany, so the Germany Pavilion. And we do have one vegan option. It's the potato pancakes with house-made applesauce. I have had them before. I love the potato pancakes. I don't love the applesauce all that much. It is a little bland to me. Maybe they changed the recipe this year, so obviously I would give it another try. But those potato pancakes were delicious. The second item we can enjoy here is a warm cheese strudel with mixed berries, and that would be vegetarian, not vegan. 
Next is going to be the Magnolia Terrace, which is the booth in the American Adventure. In this booth, we can only enjoy the dessert options that they have to offer, which is a little sad, but vegetarians can enjoy a pecan cake with maple whipped cream or pecan praline. Obviously, you can also get funnel cake in the American Adventure that's not really festival exclusive. Um, maybe the flavor, this lemon cheesecake ice cream with blueberries and powdered sugar that might only be available during the festival but you can get funnel cakes there anytime um, so I'm not really sure if that's special or not. All right moving on we've got the Taste of Marrakesh which is the Morocco booth. We do have the shakshuka which is Moroccan baked eggs in a spiced eggplant and tomato stew that is new this year which is vegetarian, and that actually sounds delicious to me. I love eggplant. Um, I always love the offerings at the Morocco booth. They're so tasty, so I can't wait to try that. Next, we do have a vegan option. It's the lemon magdalena cake with a fake compote and sangria gel. So that sounds really interesting, really tasty. I probably will try that too. I've never been disappointed at the Morocco booth, so these options are very exciting. Next, we have La Isla Fresca, which is the booth between Morocco and France. It's usually the Brazil booth in Food and Wine Festival. So here they have the Tropical Mousse Cup, which has layers of passion fruit cake, coconut mousse, and a tropical fruit glaze with fresh pineapple. Unfortunately, that is not vegan, it is vegetarian. So I'm sorry about that because it sounds really delicious, but just note, um, once again, it does have a mousse in it. Some people use gelatin in these things, so make sure you're asking if that's something you're concerned about. All right, so we are going to head to the World Showplace, which is the giant building where it always has the festival favorites and or other really fun booths that people really like to enjoy. So why don't we go ahead and start with the festival favorites booth. The first item, which is vegetarian, is a watermelon salad with pickled onions, feta, and a balsamic reduction. I have not tried it, but that sounds so tasty to me, especially on like a hot day in Epcot walking around. Having just a really refreshing watermelon salad sounds really good. The next option is a dessert. It's a key lime tart with toasted meringue. Also, I've never had this option as well. It is from last year. Obviously, it's a festival favorite from last year. So maybe I should give this one a try as well. All right, so this next booth is called Epcot's Farmer's Feast, which will have a rotating menu. Since the Flower and Garden Festival is so long, they're going to change out this menu every now and then with different items. For this first item, I would like to put an asterisk next to it. I'm not actually sure if it's vegetarian or not. I know it's not vegan, but it is a spring onion soup with crispy shallots and micro chive. It, it might not be vegan because it may have some sort of cream in the soup, but it also could use chicken stock in the stock of the soup. So this is one we're going to have to make sure we ask before we eat or buy if it's what kind of stock the soup has. But as for right now, it may be in a vegetarian option. Second, we have Off the Beat and Path, which is a profiterole with red beet mousse golden beet pastry cream, whipped goat cheese cream, and candied walnuts, which sounds absolutely delicious to me. It sounds super unique, super fun. I cannot wait to try this one. Next, we've got the Cider House, which is in the World Showplace. There's only a dessert that we can enjoy there, which is a dark chocolate raspberry tart with whipped cream, which sounds very basic, very tasty. Definitely should give it a try. And let's go ahead and move outside of the World Showplace and let's head over to Canada right next door. And we have a griddled maple pound cake with warm peach compote and sweet corn gelato. And that is from last year as well. So if you've had this before, that sweet corn gelato sounds really interesting and really tasty. Uh, let, let me know if you've had it, if you like it, if you think it should stay or maybe we should move on from that. This one I'm so excited for because I've been to so many festivals where the Mexico booth does not have anything that is plant-based or vegetarian. This is the Jardín de Fiestas, which is the Mexico booth, and we do have a Sope de Chorizo, which is the plant-based ground chorizo on fried corn dough with black beans and avocado mousse, and that is vegan. 
So that's awesome that our vegan friends get an option to try in Mexico because I know how hard Vegan Disney World, Happiest Vegan on Earth, Vegan Disney Food, how hard all of you guys work to try and get Disney to bring more plant-based options. And that's really exciting that finally the Mexico booth has something that we can all enjoy. Next, we have the Primavera Kitchen, which is in Italy. And we do have a vegetarian margarita flatbread, which has tomato sauce, mozzarella, probably some basil on the top. And we do also have the cannoli from last year, which I did have. It was pretty disappointing, but it is a cannoli, just a traditional crispy pastry with sweet ricotta, chocolate, and candied orange on the outside. This one I am so excited for. Every year at this festival, I hear people loving this option and I've never gotten it and I don't understand why because most of my favorite options usually come from this booth um, or this pavilion in Japan. So the booth is called Hanami and they've got the frushi, which is fruit sushi. So you get strawberry, pineapple, and cantaloupe wrapped in sweet rice and pink soy wraps. And that is served with whipped cream, drizzled with berry sauce, and then toasted coconut. And it sounds so delicious and I just have never tried it and it's really disappointing. So I cannot wait for this year to finally try the Frushi in the Japan booth. All right, so now we are at the France booth, which is the Fleur de Lis. And the first option is the goat cheese tart with caramelized onions on a flaky pastry crust. So this is one also I would ask. I'm not sure what they use to caramelize the onions or possibly in the pastry crust, you never know. So I would ask before you try this one. Um, we also have two different desserts that come, one we know and one that's new. So the chocolate lollipop macaron, so delicious, loved this. It was so tasty. So they're gonna have that again this year. And then we have a beignet caramelise, which is some sort of beignet filled with a vanilla cream and it's glazed with caramel fleur de sel, which is like a salty caramel, but it's even more delicious than any salty caramel that you've ever had. So that sounds so good. I cannot wait to try this option. And then as always, check your Joffreys. There's always vegan, vegetarian options for coffee. This year they've got a frozen lemonade with blackberry syrup. There's a citrus sunrise. There's some cold brews. Always check out Joffreys. They have wonderful vegan options. But we came to the end of the menu and we got through it. So talked about a lot of tasty food. I cannot wait for this festival to start, to start getting through this menu. I know it's going to take me many different trips to get through it. So if you stuck it out to the end, thank you so much for watching. If you like our content, you wanna see more, remember to hit that subscribe button, maybe find us on TikTok or Instagram, uh, leave us a comment below, definitely like this video, and we will see you on the next one. Thank you so much.